Let's open things up by talking about are you training too hard? Now, this seems like an easy cop out. Are you screwing up your recovery because you're training too hard? Let's go through this in simple ways and this may address everybody. First thing is when people start training, what they do is there is a high focus on intensity, but there is a high focus on getting there far too quick. So the majority of people who start a block of training, they start a 12 week plan, they start a six week plan, whatever it is. I nearly said a three month plan as well, but there, that is 12 weeks coach, you Okay. However, what generally happens there is they build up the intensity too quick. They're okay for a month at least, whereby they can accommodate this. However, this will always backfire and overstretch them because they have got limited fiber recruitment. They have got limited acclimatization to training and also they haven't really researched deeply who they are in terms of what makes them tick and what time they really do have. So if you've started a training program, you've been okay for a week or two, you've got to week three, it's been a struggle week for you think. I'm giving up, man, I can't handle this. I'm too fat, I'm too old, I don't need this. And you've started to make excuses. That is because you haven't gone through a proper acclimatization period to allow your muscle fibers to wake up. Four to six weeks it takes. Very few people have got that time or are willing to stick that out. So anyone who starts like that is training too hard. Training too hard is not about hard sessions repeatedly. It is about sessions that are too close together that you can't accommodate. It is sessions that are too long rather than too hard and you're not fueling properly. How do you know if you're not training too hard, coach? H how do you tell? What are the signs? Well, we'll go through that. But take a step back for a second, okay? Some people will actually be spinning on their bloody bike right now and calling it an active recovery. Active recovery only works if it's in zone one, if it's very, very light and you're acting as a blood flusher, a pusher of a higher blood pressure. Remember, when we are doing certain activities like a cool down, a recovery phase, we want to be removing. We want to be moving because you have several pump systems, okay? Pump as in the heart. The heart is a double pump, pumps blood to the lungs and blood to the body. Your muscles act in sliding filament theory. They slide over each other, acting in myosin. Do, 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 do. That sliding creates what? Friction. Yeah, that's my hand on the desk, I'll have you know. Okay, can you see down there? <laughs> okay, sorry for first timers on this channel. We do get carried away at times. There should be a government warning that comes on at the start. I forgot to put it on, but please, Keep small children's ears covered. Keep your in-laws out of the room. And certainly if your gran has turned up, you better tell it. Okay. Right. Anyway, like back to it. That friction, but that's creating a pump system. So that gastrocnemius muscle, your calf muscle, is pumping blood back up. We want that pump, but people go on active recovery. They do an hour. They do 90 minutes and they say active recovery. Bollocks. Anything that upsets the resynthesis of proteins via those essential amino acids that you get from, your diet is screwing that up, okay? It's only your ego that's making you do a little bit longer. However, we will get into that. So I would say the majority of people that screw up their recovery are their training too hard, but doing it through too long a session at the wrong time and not having enough gap between sessions, okay? So there are ways that we can, okay, fix that. Think about your recovery metrics. Are you using an intensity metric driven system or are you actually using recovery metrics? Okay, so what that means is what intensity you, do you use? Well, you probably use things like distance traveled in a week, time in a week, time in a particular zone in a week. So maybe you're looking at a 10 to 90% system whereby 10% is zone four to zone five or 20%, 80-20. And you're talking like terms like, yeah, I've started this new polarized. Uh, training method. Okay, don't kid yourself on that you're actually following some formula method that works for you. Okay, because there'll be grey areas. Remember, a zone is what? 30 to 40 watts. Are you working at the top of the zone or the middle of the zone? Always at the top, coach. I'm f***ing hard as nails. Always at the top. Why? Does it matter? Doesn't matter all the time. Okay, as long as you're in the, the zone. What is the zone? The zone is an indication of the stimulus that will be placed on your physical, your neurological systems. A stimulus. That's all it is. Your brain doesn't detect, oh, he's on the f***ing Zwift again. Look at him acting like a f just because a runner has gone past him and he's now out of zone two to catch up with that runner. Okay, it doesn't work like that. It's you against you. Okay, so the metrics that you are using have to be efficient to drive your recovery rather than your intensity. 
You're only as good as what you can recover from. So you've got to get this into your head. If you follow me for a length of period, or even if you're working with me, if you're one of the very lucky ones, because <laughs> not many folk can get hold of me now, the thing is, you've got to drive up your health. So people say, oh, you re-engineer things backwards. No, I don't. I learn from 30 years experience, and as, as an old git now, I understand the value of the process. So you've got to sign up right now. You've got to put your fingerprint in your passport and say, welcome to the process. You go through border control and you enter the process. This is a world whereby fitness is never ending. There is no peak. There is no end goal. You don't suddenly arrive and get your passport stamped again and say, that's it. You know, piss off now. You know, you're fit for life now. Okay. What you've got to understand is that it's a process that goes on. It's a journey. It's a struggle. It's a fight. But we love the fight. We take it on. We embrace it. We are warriors. We live outside our comfort zone. There is no end point. Now, to get fit and stay fit, you need to push up your health. So when someone says to me, oh, my fitness is impacted uh, because I'm too fat. No, no, no. You're too fat. That means that you've impacted on your health, not your fitness. Sure, you can't go your bike as fast as you want to because you're too fat, but you didn't get fat because you weren't riding 100 miles a week. You got fat because you're eating crap every week. That's why you got fat, not because you're not riding your bike. People get confused by what is a health metric and what is a fitness metric. And putting on too much weight or trying to lose weight, that is a health metric, okay? You can certainly engage in a faster journey or a more efficient journey with exercise, but you get fit in the gym and you get slim in the kitchen, okay? Or the fridge, as people say. But I don't eat much from the fridge fridge now. Every item of food in Scotland can be stored at cold temperatures wherever we put it. You know, I can go on holiday in Scotland and, you know, have my milk and butter sitting next to me while I'm watching TV. Yeah, that, that's a joke, by the way, okay? Mm -hmm. But understand, okay, where your intensity and your health metrics are. So what are health metrics, coach? Okay, I'm using intensity and I'm measuring my zone four time. I'm measuring my peak power, I'm measuring my power curve, I'm measuring my time, my distance, I'm trying to progress them subtly, I've got breakthrough workouts, I've got my group workouts, my solo workouts, my zone two. What are your health metrics? What are you measuring? Your resting heart rate, your blood saturation, you've got a watch probably that does that already now, okay? Resting heart rate every day of the week, are you measuring that against a stress score? Oh yeah, my watch now does stress score as well, but do you understand stress, say an RPE and just write a number down? Why does your heart rate fluctuate during the week? Why is your resting heart rate changing? What's happening? How are you accommodating stress at work? How are you accommodating in different nutrition days? How are you approaching hydration? Because I promise you, the one thing you need to take from this video is if it becomes a forced behavior, you're screwed. Remember, anyone can train hard. There's only a few of us can train smart. I'll see you in school. Yep, yeah, link is in the description. You take care, folks. Keep smiling, keep spinning. I'll see you in the next video.